Hello everyone. I want to welcome you into the word of the Lord today. I'm really glad that you are here. As I said in the last message, we have a lot of new people. And so I'm glad that you've decided to tune in to what the Lord has for you today, because I know a hundred percent that you're not here by accident. I know that it's not random that you clicked on this message. I know many people will say, sometimes they try to scroll past the message, you know, but it keeps popping up on their feed. Or some people may say that, you know, they didn't want to click on it because maybe the title didn't stand out to them and it wasn't something that looked like it was what they needed to hear. But then the moment they get in the room, the moment they get into the message and they hear what it is that the Lord is speaking, then they know that that message was for them. I believe it's going to be the same for you today. And so I don't want to take too long to welcome you into this word, but I want to get into prayer so that I can jump right into what the word of the Lord is today. But I want to let you know before I get into prayer that this is going to be one that is going to be something that may trigger some people. It's going to be something that may rattle some feathers. And I'm telling you that in advance so that you can prepare yourself to possibly feel convicted, but to come out on the other side, completely transform, completely change in a certain area of your thinking so that you can rise above to that next level of glory. And so that God can then use you to do great things in the earth. We're going to really transform some things in your mind so that you can step into life more abundantly. This is going to be one of those messages. So I want you to come into agreement with me in prayer. And I'm going to get into what the Lord wanted to share with you today. I thank you, Lord, for sending your your servants to this message. I thank you for sending them here because I know that if they're here, if, if they have landed upon this word today, that you are wanting to take them somewhere further than anywhere they could ever get in their own might or power. It's going to be by your spirit. And I know that anytime you send a child of God here, that your spirit is wanting to go forth in their life and their heart and their mind and penetrate areas of them that have been shut down areas of them that have been blocked off, whether it's through things that they have blocked off themselves, things they've shut down themselves. But when your word penetrates, it penetrates like a sword and it does it in a way to where we now know things that we need to separate ourselves from old mindsets, old beliefs, people, Lord, that we need to separate ourselves from. Let this message be one of those today that reveals to them what those things are. Let this message penetrate them in that way as I lower myself and you be exalted through me and you speak through me as your spirit is released into the lives of those who are listening right now. Let it exceed space and time, meaning no matter when they're listening to this, wherever they are listening to this, let it reach them right where they are, whenever it is, Lord. I thank you for the fruit that will come forth from this message. I know that there are things that are far beyond anything we could ever think of or imagine that plays into the grand big agenda of the kingdom of God that you are wanting to enforce here within the earth realm. Things we can't even, as I said, think of or imagine, but you want them who are listening today to be a part in that plan. You want us to step outside of ourselves and see the big picture that you have planned, not only for humanity, but for our lives. I ask that you let this message reveal that to them so that they can step into their rightful position as a child of God who has been sent here within the earth. To, to be a bridge, Lord, to be a vessel of God, to bring down the things of the kingdom into the earth realm. I thank you, Lord, for using me as a vessel to equip the saints of God. I thank you in advance that all that will come forth for, uh, from this. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I want to jump right in to what the Lord wanted to share with you today. But I, I do want to say one thing, though. This message, it may or may not be a lengthy one, but for those of you who, and it's not many of you, but there are some people who say, well, you know, the messages are getting a little bit longer. And I do want to say this, if they're getting longer because they're getting meatier, this means that there is a lot more for you to chew on here. 
there's a lot more for you to take in, which means there's more transformation happening. And because of that, we see that reflected in the testimonies that you all release. And so I will say this, the messages are not going to get shorter. I'm just going to put that out there. Every now and then, I may release a short message if the Spirit of the Lord has me going for a short period of time, but we flow with the Spirit of God here. And so what I would suggest to you, those of you who say, well, can you make the messages shorter? No, I cannot make the messages shorter. But what I will say is if you really are hungry for what the Spirit of God is doing through this ministry, then you could just pause it, go about your day, then come back and pick back up where you, where you left off. That's what I do. When I listen to ministers that I like, you could do the same. And I say that in love because I care about you and your walk with the Lord. And so this message may or may not be a lengthy one, but what we will do is flow with the Spirit of God. So what I want you to know is that it is bigger than you, and I'm talking about the plan of God. The plan of God for humanity and even your life is bigger than you. And I have to start out by saying that because there are many people who want things for themselves and they're just thinking for today. They're just thinking for next week or next month. But what the Lord is wanting you to understand today and hold on to this for as long as you live and exist on this earth, on planet earth, is that it's bigger than you. So the things he wants to do for your life far exceeds you. It's for people that's attached to you, everything that is attached to you. And so what you have to begin to do from this day forward is really begin to plan and look outside of yourself so that you're setting yourself up to impact and influence for the kingdom of God, generations of people and even nations. And some of you may say, how can I influence nations? Well, it just starts with doing one thing for the Lord. One thing for the Lord. You know, I'll give an example. Many people will uh, bypass sowing into a ministry. And many people who do so into a ministry don't even realize this. But what's happening there is you're not just impacting that minister. You're not just impacting that ministry, but you're also impacting and making ripples effect in everything and everyone that is attached to that minister or ministry. And so that is how you become somebody who then impacts and influences nations because you're you're putting the things of the kingdom first. And so when God increases you, when God supplies you in abundance, when God changes your mindset about a certain thing, he's doing it so that you can be one who impacts nations. So you can be one who impacts your family, who impacts your communities. And that's just how it works. It's not just for you. It's never just for you. The same goes for when God blesses you, not just for you. And so today what we're going to be talking about though is coming out of the mindset of just you and I'm just going to say it how it is a very selfish way of thinking and many people don't see it as selfish but we're going to get into it today. Come out of, out of the mindset of thinking that it's just you but it's, it's a much bigger plan at play for your life, yes your life, and I believe that's Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has plans and a future for you to give you hope. And so come out of that mindset of it's just you and come out of your flesh, but really look at the big picture of God for humanity and for your life. And so I'm going to say this, the moment, and it happens at the very exact moment, the moment that people get wrapped up in their flesh is the exact moment that they lose sight of the big picture. They lose sight of the big picture and people will, will throw away, I'm talking about entire destinies. They'll throw away the entire plan that God has for their life because they're wrapped up in a fleshly moment and ultimately it's really survival mode. And so when I talk about being in the flesh and being in survival mode, I'm using those, those phrases inter interchangeably. And so the moment that people get wrapped up in their flesh is the exact moment they lose sight of the bigger picture. They lose sight of what God is doing in their life. They lose sight of the plans of God for their life. They lose sight of the big picture that God has for humanity because they're not thinking about the things of God. They're not thinking about the things of the kingdom. They're thinking about self. Because as I say, many of you who are, you know, you've been attached to this ministry for a while, you know my saying, fleshly desires glorify you, godly desires glorify God. And so when you're wrapped up in the flesh, it's only to glorify self. It's idolizing self. 
And so to operate from a fleshly state, and you could write this down, it is 100% to operate from a state of survival. And many people don't see it that way. But to be in the flesh is to be, I don't want to say locked in, I'm going to say locked in, but you're not locked there. But to be in a state of survival. I want to give you a perfect example of this. I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 25. I'm reading from my ESV. And this is the account of when Esau had sold his birthright because he was literally in a state of survival. And so, and this is, he was operating from the flesh as well. Again, that's Genesis 25, verse 29 through 33. So I'm going to read this here. But what I want you to grasp is that when you're operating from a state or state of survival and you're operating from a place of a of, of fleshly mindset there is not much that people won't do there's not much that people won't do i'm going to start here verse 29 listen to this once when jacob was cooking stew esau came in from the field and he was exhausted and esau said to jacob let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted therefore his name is called Edom Jacob said sell me your birth right now Esau said I'm about to die of what use is a birthright to me Jacob said swear to me now so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob what I want you to realize is that he was in a state of survival and it's a, it's a state of being that you can't shift out of, and we're going to be talking about that in a moment. That And honestly, this state of being, it has nothing to do with, with how much food you have. And I know many people will tell you otherwise, but I'm going to get into how it really has nothing to do with how much food you have, has nothing to do with what's in your bank account. It's a state of being that you can shift out of. This is why fasting and prayer is so important because it gets you out of the fleshly mindset. It gets you out of that constant state of going, 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 going in survival mode. And it shifts you into the spirit. It helps you separate your spirit man from, from the flesh. And so when we can clearly see from this account that when people are in the flesh, they're operating in the flesh, they're in survival mode, and there's not much they won't do. And so anyone could come and offer that person anything, but because they're just trying to survive, they're going to take it. They're going to take it. And I'm telling you, and I'm glad you're here and you're listening to this, is that is exactly how the enemy gets people trapped in cycles. And that's how generational curses start. Because when a person is in that mindset, they're not thinking clearly. They're not even seeing things clearly. They're not looking at things from God's perspective. And so anything is liable to enter into that person's life and bring about death, destruction, and even kill things to where now everything is on a downward, downward spiral. And of course, it's all by the works of the enemy. It's all by the works of the devil. But what I'm telling you is that you don't have to live that way. You don't have to live in a state of operating through the flesh and being in survival mode. But the devil does want to keep you stuck there. He does want to keep you trapped there. And so there are many people who they are in all kinds of just, just all kinds of stuff. And I would just, I want to call it trash, but like just trash of the enemy. I want you to imagine Satan just grabbing a large dumpster. And this is the best way I can describe it. And that dumpster is filled with all kinds of stuff. Things to keep you trapped in financial bondage, title loans, Things that, you know, scams, deception, false doctrine, all this stuff is in this dumpster and he just takes it and throws it into your life. That is essentially what he's trying to do when it comes to those who are in survival mode because he knows they'll take it. He knows they'll take any trash that he throws at them. But that ends today. So as you can see, people, there's much, there's not much people will say no to when they're in survival mode. I'll give you a good example of this. I wasn't going to share this, but like, this is something I was looking into. So what that looks like, another example, do you know that they actually, they actually did studies on this where if someone is drowning, that person is immediately shifted into survival mode. And so what happens is that in the moment, they're grabbing onto anything to try to survive. And a lot of people, if their children are there, they'll grab onto their children just to try to survive. They'll grab onto anything that's in their reach to try to survive. 
that is the state of somebody who's in survival mode. They're not thinking clearly. They're not seeing things clearly. Clearly, and the enemy knows that. And so, I don't know if anyone has ever told you this, but it's important for you to know, one, we cannot, as children of God, operate in the flesh or from a place of survival. Remember, I'm using those terms interchangeably. And the reason is because when you operate from the flesh, which is a place of survival, is that you're operating from a realm of dead things. You're operating from a realm of dead things. I'm going to prove it to you in scripture. But what I want you to know is that your flesh is dead. And I know that you hear that uh, often, but it's important to really lean a little bit deeper into this because your flesh is dead. And so then when you're following the desires of the flesh, you're following the desires of something that's come from a dead realm. And so there's nothing good that can ever come from that. It's going to lead to death and destruction. So following the desires of your flesh, it gets you absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And we see this happening by just, just by observing the lives of those who are in the world. Where it seems like they may be amassing or getting some success, whatever you may consider successful. But then after a while, it won't be long before it's lost very quickly. Now, of course, if they become saved and they actually begin to follow the word of Jesus Christ, then he'll give them those things. No sorrow will be added to it. But anything that is gained from a fleshly place, and yes, you can still be in a place of survival and have a lot. This is why I say it has nothing to do with what's in your bank account or your, or your uh, refrigerator or what you have. But the point is that the enemy wants to keep you trapped there. I'll just say that. Anything that's gained from the flesh, it will lead to death and destruction. I want to read to you Proverbs 14, 12. It says, and it's as simple as this. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but it leads to death and destruction. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but it leads to death and destruction. What is that way? The way of the flesh. The way of the flesh, of following fleshly desires but it leads to death and destruction. And so when you're operating from the flesh, you're operating from a dead realm. It's only the spirit that gives life. It actually tells us that. I'm going to read it to you in John chapter 6, verse 63, where it says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And so life only comes from the spirit. It only comes from the spirit man. When your body goes to the grave, you will still exist. You will not cease to exist. You'll still exist because you are a spirit housed in a body. And I, think of it as a, um, as a flesh suit, like a literal, just as when you wake up in the morning and put on your clothes, you have on clothes that is every day that is your flesh, flesh suit. But the moment it goes into the dirt, you, you will still exist. Because the spirit is the one that gives life. That's John 6, 63. And so you exist in a realm of eternity, but you have a flesh suit. And it's important that you make that distinction because many people think they are their flesh. They think they're their thoughts. You're not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. Actually, you're supposed to, and you're called to take captive every thought that does not align with the will of God. Why is that? Because you're not your thoughts. You are the one who have the ability to capture those thoughts. You are not your flesh. It's important for you to know this and make this distinction because there are many times that people get wrapped up in the, the flesh and the desires of the flesh and then here they are in survival mode because they think that this is the way that they are supposed to go. But no, there's a way, remember, that seems right into a man, but it leads to death and destruction but the spirit gives life. And so there's you, there's the real you, but then there's your spirit man that has been made new in Christ Jesus. And then there's your flesh. Let me know if you're grabbing this, put this, put it in the comments if you're catching on to what I'm sharing with you here. And so you're an internal being that's housed in a temporary body suit. And I need to set this foundation for you before I start talking about how to shift out of survival mode, I know this is going to set many of you free. I want to read to you what Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. He says, As we look not to things that are seen, 
but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The things that are unseen are eternal. Your spirit is unseen, it is eternal. And so what I want you to know is that the devil loves to keep people in survival mode because it changes the way that you see God in the world around you. You're not seeing things clearly. You don't even see God clearly because now you're seeking God's hand and not God's heart. And so survival mode, as I said, it has more to do with a state of being than with what you see in your refrigerator, your bank account, or your closet, whatever material thing that you have. Because many people can look at celebrities or they can look at people who are wealthy or they have a lot and they can say, surely that person isn't in survival mode. No, that may not necessarily be the case. Because if they're constantly having, if they didn't get it the way the Lord had said is the right way to get it within the word of God, and they're constantly having to toil to keep it. They're constantly having to toil to keep whatever it is they have. And I'm telling you, whatever way they got it, they're going to have to keep doing that to keep it. This is why people who you see, they've received wealth. Let's use celebrities for an example. And they receive it in a worldly way. They're going to have to keep being worldly to keep it. Otherwise, they're going to have to come into the kingdom of God and get their wealth another way, a righteous way. This is why you see people who do wicked things when you turn on your television and they're getting a lot of what people call so, so-called clout. They continue to do it. Why are they continuing to do it? Because it's making them very wealthy. And the reason why is because they have not received it through the way of the Lord, but through a fleshly way. But the moment they stop, I'm telling you that all that it is that they have, it will be removed. Why? Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so the devil loves to keep people in survival mode. One, because he can control them that way. He can continue to keep them worldly by dangling material things and their, and their uh, sight and their view because if he, if he no longer dangles that, then they'll realize that all, the, all that they've done is pointless. And it's very possible that that person can easily be ministered to, but I'm telling you, and I don't want to go off into another message, is that the devil loves to keep people in survival mode, one, so that he can control them, and two, because there's anything, as I said, that he can throw into your life that's trash and people will accept it. And so I'm going to get some water. I feel thirsty. <laughs> and of course, you know, as I said, how much money you have or what you have physically, whether that be any material thing, has nothing to do with if you're in survival mode or not. But 100% not having these things are something that can shift someone into survival mode. And I need to say that because many of you may be saying, well, you're looking at your life, you're looking at where you are, wherever you are, whether you're living in an apartment, whether you're living in a home that you don't like, it's not a living condition that, that you want to be in, or you don't have the needs that you believe that the Lord wants to give you. You may be looking at your situation and you're saying, well, surely you're in survival mode because you don't have those things. Well, yes, not having those things can shift someone into a state of being in survival mode, but you don't have to stay there. You do not have to stay there. I'm going to share with you some testimonies in a little bit of people who are sitting under this ministry, all glory to God, who was in a position where they would consider themselves in survival mode, but then just by leaning into God as their source, immediately what they needed showed up for them and more than what they expected, many of, many of them. And so you can change your state of being. You don't have to exist in a state of survival mode where you're now just grabbing for anything that is being thrown at you. No, you want what God wants for you. You want what the Lord has stored up for you. And so this is something you can change through 100% reliance on God. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you have. You can lean into God and see him and him alone as your source and it change everything for you. You're no longer in survival mode because God is providing for you on a daily basis. This is what he was trying to get the Hebrew Israelites to grasp through the wilderness that listen, 
just because you're in the wilderness doesn't mean that you have to be in this state or survival mode. Because I'm telling you, it was a mindset in them. They were, they were in this state of being mentally, of being in survival mode. And so they thought they, they thought they needed to go back to Egypt. They were thinking there's meat in Egypt. There's all this stuff that we had in Egypt, but yet God was providing for them bread from heaven every single day. What happened? They didn't, they couldn't believe it because they didn't see it in front of them already. And because of that, they wanted to go back. And so we're going to talk about this. So no matter who you are, no matter what you have, and I'm talking about actually look at, look at what you have, look at what's in your refrigerator. And we have to get really real here so that we can expose the works of the, the lies of the devil, the works of the enemy, and bring about the manifestations of the glory of God and blessings of God in your life. Look at what you have. Look at what's in your refrigerator. Look at what's in your bank account. I know this may be hard for some of you. Look at what you have in your house. Some of you may not have the furniture you want. Some of you may not even have furniture. You may be in your car. You may be in a hotel. You may be in an apartment that you don't like. You may be living with family. Whatever it is, look at what you have. I'm going to tell you that it does not matter what you're looking at. It does not matter where you are or who you are. Because some of you may say, well, you didn't come from a family who taught you much. You didn't come from a family who who showed you the way that you should go in life. That doesn't matter because God is your source. Lean into him and him alone and he can all change for you in an instant, within an instant. The decisions you make today determine your destiny. Decisions determine destiny. I've said that many times, you can write that down. Decisions determine destiny. And so one decision gets you in a pig pen. Remember, that's what happened with the prodigal son then one decision can put you in the palace. If one decision got you in that low place, because I'm, I know many of you can pinpoint it, you can say, it was when I started hanging out with that person. It was when I made that money decision. It was when this person stole this from me. It was when, when this happened, when I took that job and my health started going down. If one decision brought you to that place, one decision, one decision can lift you out of it, 100%. And that decision is relying on God leaning into him 100% as your source. That job isn't your source. That person isn't your source. Whatever it is that you're looking to as your source, you have to cut it and make God your source and lean into him 100%. And so you have to decide where you want to be. So I want to share with you, I'm going to put my phone down here, but I want to share with you some testimonies of people under this ministry, all glory to God. And I have to give God glory because honestly, I'm just the vessel of people who would be in what you would consider to be survival mode. And within a moment's decision, the Lord showed up for him, uh, up for them. Some of them may be he, but <laughs> um, up for them. And he'll do the same thing for you. He'll do the same thing for you. So give me a moment. I'm going to pull them. I have I actually screenshot it quite a few, but I'm only going to read um maybe two or three to you. So, and give me a moment because there's a, some of these are long, so I wanna make sure that I'm not sharing too much detail, but just the testimony uh, pointers that they, that they hit on. Okay, so this person said, hello, you know, they, they apologize for the testimony being a little bit lengthy. But they said um, they have been connected to the ministry for a few months and they considered themselves in a wilderness season. They actually said, I was, in a, I was indeed in a wilderness season. Things were low. God humbled them, molded them, um, and they were going through a lot. They needed the provision of God and they had no steady money, no income. But then they said, not sure if you remember, but you sent me a prayer for finances. Their bills were behind and their bills were behind, but they were still getting paid enough to keep things afloat or going. And then they said, God is so good that we're not able to get a job in their wilderness season. But in one day, listen to this, in one day, and this is why I say, all it takes is one decision. If one decision got you where you were, and I know you can pinpoint exactly what it was, exactly what happened, one decision can get you out of that. And that decision is making God your source. They said, I'm quoting word for word, literally all in one day, 
me and my kingdom spouse came into contact, God has also answered a long ago prayer and deep desire, leading them to a good church. And then they received multiple job opportunities, which one of them they were hired for and it was their dream job. One day, one day, one day, the same will be for you. You don't have to continue to exist in a place of survival mode and look around me and say, well, I can't do this because I don't have that. I can't do this because I can't do that because I don't have this or no one, no one will come and help me or no, no, stand up on your 10 toes, 10 toes down in the word of God and begin to one, call those things that be not as though they are lean into God as your source, go to God and he will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. And we're going to talk about that too. One day, I'm going to read two more. Okay, this person, um, and then we're still doing, for those of you who are wondering, are you still going to do Testimony Tuesdays? We're still going to do Testimony Tuesdays, but this is relevant to what we're talking about today. Okay, so this person says, all glory to God. Hey, I've been following your ministry for over two years now. Two years, wow, that's in, that's incredible. Um those of you who've been here for that long, I want you to put in the comments. Uh, two years now, I want to say that I've experienced miracles and wonders throughout this, but the first time I've joined your fast, this person actually joined the fast and said that throughout the fast, day one, their knee was fully healed after their cartilage had broken off. Day two, they received a substantial amount of money and their bank account did not figure out how it got, got there. Same thing had happened for you. Day three, they received one of the biggest breakthroughs at their church and it was a confirmation for you. Day four, God had answered a prayer that they had concerning a job. And then day five, they said the Lord had um, woke them up by singing melodies over them, which I think that's very beautiful because the Lord had done something to me very similar to that. Um, I believe it was a couple months ago. Okay, and then I want to share one, one more with you. And this, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to get encouraged because I'm telling you, those of you who are in survival mode, I'm going to outline to you how to know if you're in survival mode because some of you, you're hitting a ceiling. You're hitting a ceiling in your relationships. You're hitting a ceiling in your finances. You're hitting a ceiling with your health and you cannot for the life of you figure out why or what is going on. It could very much be that you're in survival mode. It could be that you're operating in some area from a fleshly standpoint or state of being. And we're going to break you out of that today. So this person said, last testimony, this person said, hello, wanted to share my testimony. Um, I'm not going to share too many details. This person was on the verge of not having a place to stay, but then they said no, they took authority. They were not going to allow the devil to throw them around. They were not going to allow the devil to bully them. They took authority and spoke against it, agreed with us in prayer, sowed into the ministry, and then they received a deposit that immediately put them in a position to where now they have a place to stay. And it's their own place, by the way, all by the glory of God, all by the glory of God. And I'm telling you that the same thing can happen for you. And it just takes one decision that you're going to make God your source. You're not going to sit and wallow in survival mode, but you're going to be a person who looks to God and you make him a hundred percent your source. And the same thing will happen for you. And so we're going to talk about um, what, what could be going on? What are some signs that could be going on in your life if you're someone who may be in survival mode? And then we're going to talk about how to shift out of survival mode. And then I'm going to give you some scriptures to stand on because I, I have to go into the word of God and give you scripture because that is, it's the power of the word of God that really begins to shift and move things in your life. And so that's what it takes. So it takes multiple decisions over time that shifts you into a place of life more abundantly. And this is what God desires for you. He desires and delights in you being prosperous and you'll be moved into a place to where you are now actively participating in the plan of God for your life and the plan God has for humanity as a whole. 
You're not somebody who's just looking at self. You're not somebody who's just trying to make it through the day. You're not somebody who wakes up every day and you're just trying to figure out how you're going to put how you're going to put food on the table. And I just have to be real with you or how you're going to how you're going to where you're going to stay or how you're going to make it through the day. That's not you anymore. But you're somebody who has now taken authority and you made God your source. So you may be, and I want you to lean into this. I'm going to get another sip of water. Because these points are very real that I'm going to share with you. And I haven't heard anyone, anyone in my entire life share this with anyone, especially the children of God. Okay. And you could really lean into these, write this down if you want to. You may be someone who's in survival mode if you're always putting out little fires or emergencies. If you're always finding that there's some little fire or emergency, and I'm talking about this is your way of life. This is your way of life. You're always putting out little fires or emergency. You may be someone who's in survival mode if there's always a financial emergency, a food emergency, or, you're, or you find yourself struggling to get your basic needs met your basic needs met that's food that's shelter that's clothing and it takes being real with where you are to see real lasting change and this is how we expose the works of the devil by being real with ourselves and not avoiding reality right because it's by looking at the state of where you are to where you can now invite god into your situation not by ignoring it and so you may be in survival mode if you find yourself constantly competing with others, constantly competing with others and comparing yourself to others. Because if you're in a state, if you're in a place where you're competing with your neighbor, you're comparing yourself to them, you don't think there's enough to go around. You don't think there's enough to go around and so you're competing. And so when we bring that into modern day, Knowing the God that we know, the God that we serve, the God of abundance, the God of no limits, the abundant God that we serve that exists outside of space and time, by the way, which puts limits on things. Knowing the God that you serve, the Bible that we now have, the truth that Jesus came so that we can have life more abundantly, not life more limitedly, we should not be competing with anyone or for anything or comparing ourselves to anyone or anything. And so you may be in survival mode if you find yourself constantly competing with others and comparing yourself to others. You may also be in survival mode if you hoard resources because deep down, and I just have to be real with you all because I'm going to tell you, no one... I personally have never heard anyone sharing this with anyone, but I have to be real with you all because you've come here and the Lord has begun to use this ministry to really transform the lives of those who he sent here. And so as honoring the assignment the Lord has put on my life, I have to come here and tell you the truth and nothing and nothing but the truth according to the word of God. And so you may be in survival mode if you hoard resources because deep down you truly don't believe that there's enough to go around. Deep down, you don't believe God is a God of abundance with no limits and that he will supply you with more. So you hoard and hold on to everything tight that comes into your hands. The only thing we should be holding on to tight is the word of God, is God. And so those who don't operate from a place of survival, they release things knowing that it will come back to them more and better than before. This is Luke 638. Give and then it should be given to you. With good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is the golden rule. And so another sign that you may be in survival mode is if you see everything as a limited resource. You see everything as a limited resource. So you find yourself constantly asking for success, but preparing for failure. And I'm going to tell you that you're going to receive what you prepare for. And I know it's going to cut deep for some of you, but just look back over it over your life. You're going to receive what you prepare for. And so if you prepare for abundance, if you prepare for success, then you're going to receive abundance. You're going to receive success. I'm going to give you a visual representation of what this looks like. If you know that you are going to imagine you move 
or imagine, let me, let me put it this way. Imagine wherever you are, let's say you, you're in your home and your home is fully furnished, but you know that you're going to be receiving new furniture. What are you going to do? You're going to make space for it. You're going to prepare for the new that's coming in. Let's say that you have um, a container with food in it and it's in your refrigerator. It's been sitting in there for a while and you know that you are going to make something new for dinner tonight and you want to use that container. What are you going to do? You're going to empty it out. You're going to create more space in your refrigerator. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to create more space. You're going to increase the capacity of, at which you can hold that thing. And so that is what I mean by preparing for success, preparing for what you want. And so you may be in survival mode if you see everything as a limited resource. So you're an also somebody who's constantly saying you want more. You're constantly saying you want this X, Y, Z, whatever it is, but you're preparing for the worst. You're preparing for failure. Prepare for what God said is yours and then take it because you've been expecting it all along. So preparation is a demonstration of your faith. And you can write that down. Preparation, it is a demonstration of your faith. Faith without works is dead. And that's exactly what it means by that statement, by that scripture, is that you prepare for what you want. So how do you shift out of survival mode? How do you shift out of survival mode? And you could write this down too, because I'm not just going to tell you how do you know if you're in survival mode and not share with you. And I'm going to give you scripture after this, how to shift out of survival mode. And so what I want you to do is right now on the spot, recognize God as your help and your source. I'm going to go a little deeper into what I mean by this, because I know many people say that and they say God is your source. And that's very true. But when push comes to shove and the devil throws, like I said, trash at you because he does it all the time and you're in a state of survival mode, you're going to be moved to grab whatever it is you can put your hands on to try to help you stay afloat. But how do you actually recognize God as your help and as your source? This means, I'm going to get some water. <laughs> this means not relying on another person. I know this is going to be very hard for many of you, but I'm going to pray for you at the end of this. And I'm going to give you scripture because I'm telling you, I gave you testimonies so that you can be encouraged and each testimony, these people, they could have used other people or other things as their source, but they went to God and because of it, they received exactly what they needed right on time, not a moment too late, and some of them more. And we have way more testimonies, all glory to God, um, but that was, those are just a few. So how do you rely on God as your help and your source? Not relying on other people, not relying on the government, not relying on your mama, not relying on your daddy, not relying on your job. Your resources, they come from God and God alone. Now, God will use those people who will use those things, who will use your job, who will use your family. He'll use other people, whatever it may be, to come and bless you. But they are not your source. They are not your source. And I'm telling you. When you begin to look at these things as your source, then the moment they say no, the moment they deny you of something, you feel like you are in lack. You feel like you can't have it, but the devil is a liar because God is your source. They don't get to determine where you get to stay. They don't get to determine if you get, have a place to stay. They don't get to determine how much money you have. They don't get to determine if you get your healing. God is your source. And it doesn't matter what person comes along that the Lord may use to bless you. That's beautiful. And you tell them, God bless you, but God sent them. It was sent into your life by God because he's your source. And so this means you are not to rely on any of these sources, meaning other people, your job, the government for your basic needs like food, shelter, clothing, and why is this? Because if they tell you no, then are you now going to go without those things? No, go to the source, which is God, and he'll make a way where there's no way. And so another way to switch out of survival mode is to no longer see yourself 
as someone who has to compete with others or compare yourself to them. No longer see yourself as a victim, but you are a victor. No longer see yourself as somebody who has to compete or compare with anyone. Everyone was born into this world in our own lane, in our own lane. And the moment we decide we want to cross over into someone else's lane and try to compete with them at something they were born to do, we abandon our own high calling. We abandon the plan that God has for our life, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. We abandon the, the plan he has put on our life, which is our, ultimately our destiny path, from the moment we were born. And so the only person you should be comparing yourself to is the person you were yesterday, the person you were last week, the person you were last, last year. Assess who you were last year. Are you still the same person? Have you, have you made strides? Okay, how can you be a better person tomorrow? How can you be a better person next week? How can you be a better person next year? This is the only comparing you should be doing. And so the third way to shift, or actually I think this is the fourth way, not sure, I lost count. The fourth way to shift out of survival mode, I want you to do this right now. <laughs> Make a vow to yourself and God today that in life, you will no longer hoard things as if it's a limited resource. You're no longer going to hoard things as if it's going to run out someday, but that you will live with the heart stance of a giver because you know there's always more where that came from because you're connected to God who is your source. God is a limitless God. He's God of abundance. There's more where that came from. Absolutely. There's always more and better. And so I want to give you scriptures to help you stand on anchor yourself in and really, really root your yourself in, in these moments, uh, to shift out our survival mode. So I want to take you, I'm going to read it to you in my scripture, in my Bible, not scripture, uh, Matthew 6, 30 through 33. Let's see here. Let me know if this is helping you in the comments. Matthew 6, this is still the ESV, verse 30 through 33. Okay. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need, knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So when I shared those testimonies with you, you could see a trend there. And the same is for every testimony that comes through. That they were in a situation, they turned to God. They turned to God as their source, and then the Lord did this for them. And they said, God, this, God did this for me. God did that for me. And the same will be for you. As you stop, as you, you shift out of that place of survival and fear and anxious, and all of, those, all of those states of being, they're in like a network together. Fear, anxiety, survival, and moving, operating in the flesh, they all lock in together. As you shift out of that and you come up to a higher state of being and understanding of who your God is, you will have the same testimony. Then God did this for me. Then God did that for me. And it'll happen for you within a moment. Things you've been trying to make happen for however, however long God can make happen within an instant. Why? Because you've sought for first the kingdom of God, the things of God. You're doing this here now. You're encouraging yourself in the word of the Lord. You're listening to the word of God, which increases you in faith. You know, there is someone who said in the last message, they said, this increased my faith. I'm now going to take authority over my situation. That's what I'm talking about. That's, don't let the devil just bully you around and throw trash on you in hopes that you will accept it. No, you will not accept it. You're only going for what God said you should have. That's it, per period. And so I want to take you to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. One second. I'm going to actually probably read a little bit above verse 19, but I do want to start out at verse 4. 
I mean, verse, uh, yeah, chapter four, verse 19. Okay. This is Paul. He's speaking to the, um, the Philippians. Verse 19, he says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this is a beautiful scripture that many people quote, and I quote it a lot because it's so encouraging. It's true. I'm telling you, as you stand on it, the Lord will begin, you'll begin to move for you. He'll begin to provide for you. I remember actually, this was one of the verses that I stood on when I was first looking to God to provide my daily bread, really my, my basic needs, shelter, clothing, food. I stood on this verse like nobody's business. And this is why I'm giving it to you today. Um, it, as you're here and the Lord's led you here and you found yourself as someone who's in survival mode. I'm telling you, as you grab hold of this one, especially Philippians 4.19 and Matthew 6.30 through 33, you're going to see the Lord show up for you as you begin to encourage yourself in these scriptures. Paul is saying, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not some of your needs, every need of yours. And so what I found to be true about this verse, and I have not heard this shared anywhere else. And so I'm excited to share it with you because I wish someone would have told me this when I first started standing on this verse. What I found to be true about this verse is that it's different for everybody. So that means whatever you consider to be a need, the Lord will meet that because everyone's needs are different. And so what may be a need for you may not be a need for somebody else. And I'm going to be real with you. And some of you may say, well, that's not a need. Okay, well, it may not be a need for you, but it's a need for me. So I need my nails to be done. And so the Lord will always make sure that my, I'm, I have what I need so that I'm well kept. And it'll never be, that's the standard. It'll never be below that. Why? Because I'm called to be a glory carrier. It's a need of mine to have certain things. And so whatever it's, whatever is considered to be a need in your life, and I'm, I'm talking about, it gives God glory. I'm not talking about, yeah. The Lord will supply and meet every need. And so some of you may have certain things in your life where you may say, okay, you have to go from A to B to work. And so you consider it a need for your car to be filled and you have a full tank of gas every week. That is what you consider to be a need and so God will meet that. Now I wanna give you the flip side of that. There may be somebody else who has to go from A to B to work. And so they only need half a tank. And so they may consider it to be a need for only half of their tank to be filled with gas. And so God will meet that need. And so whatever you consider to be a need, the Lord will meet that need for you. And I'm gonna give you another example because I really wanna drill this home. I need a peaceful, organized office space and a, and a desk to sit at and work when it comes to the things of God. Some people may say they don't need a desk. Some people may say they just need the floor. And so God will supply a place for them to stay where they can work on, on the floor. And I'm just telling you, that is how it works. So supply, as you stand on this scripture, it's gonna be different for everybody. And so really sit down and assess what do you need and don't think from a place of God is a God of limited resources because he's a limitless God a God of abundance, and he will supply what you need. And then oftentimes, as you continue to increase in the things of God, he's going to go above and beyond in Ephesians 3.20 you to where now you have exceedingly and abundantly above anything you could ever think or imagine. That comes for those who diligently seek God. Why? Because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so when you find yourself in constant seek of God, He's going to now reward you in a very different way to where this verse, Philippians 4.19, now upgrades into Ephesians 3.20. Let me know if that makes sense. Okay. And so these verses, Matthew 6, 30 through 33, and Philippians 4.19, for those of you who are wanting to shift out of survival mode like yesterday, I encourage you to stand on them 10 toes down. And so when you're no longer operating from a place of survival, you become someone 
who generously gives to others because God has now supplied you an abundance. And you know that if you don't have it right now, it doesn't mean that God can't supply it in an instant. It doesn't mean God can't supply, supply it in a second, a day, a week, or a month. I'm telling you, I just read that testimony, all glory to God, where they said, listen, all in one day, got a new job. The Lord had, uh, they met their, their kingdom spouse. Who knows what was happening if they were in communication with them before. I don't, I don't really know. It's none of my business. I, you know, maybe it was shared in the testimony, didn't read it all. Don't want to share to me details. What I'm going to say is, is that I've had similar experiences in my life where there was something that I needed God to do for me. And maybe through fleshly thinking, I'm rationing out the time. I'm saying it's going to take this much time. I need to do that. Then God makes it show, God makes it show up in a day. And I feel silly for even planning it out at all. And the Lord will do the same thing for you. We'll plan our whole life out for ourselves based on what we see in the natural realm. Then God comes in and throws you a huge curveball in the most beautiful way because he's God. And so when you rely on God as your source and your help and not other people, not the systems of this world, not the systems of man, then you begin to see yourself in a place of living life more abundantly. You're no longer, you will no longer be in survival mode. And so you become a person who can give generously to others because God has supplied you in abundance. I want to read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, because this will become your reality, especially as you stick with this ministry. This is, I'm going to be reading actually this one from the Amplified Version. I really like the way that it says it. This is Paul speaking, and he tells us, you will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous and this generosity administered through us is producing thanksgiving to God from those who benefit. And so what it's telling us is that those who benefit from the generosity that we are displaying towards others, they're now thanking God because of you. God is getting more glory because you, you, you've been generous. Because you're not just thinking about self anymore. You're not in survival mode anymore. You're not competing with others anymore. You, you know there's more where that came from. And so you're giving to others. You're not hoarding onto resources. You're not hoarding money. You're not hoarding food. You're not hoarding clothes. You're not hoarding things. You're just get, you're, you're able to give more because you have more. And because of this, now other people are thanking God because you have allowed yourself to be used as a vessel in that way. It's a beautiful thing. As I said, you become a part of God's big plan for humanity. And so stick around here and you're going to find yourself in that position that will become your reality. And so you'll also become someone whose words are seasoned with grace because you're no longer competing. You're no longer comparing yourself with others. You see everyone the way that God sees them. And so you speak to them as such. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody who they're constantly competing with the next person? All they talk about is what other people, what somebody else is doing, what they had on that day, um, how much money they may or may not make, how they're better than them, how they don't want to be like that person, but they want to be like this person. How about you be like yourself? How about you be like who God has made you and then work on becoming better than that the next day? I'm just saying. Your words will be seasoned with grace because you're not talking about other people in certain ways. You're not talking about certain things because you see everyone the way God sees you. This is what I mean when I say that when you're not in survival mode, you see the world and God differently. You see things rightly. And then you begin to see God and the world around you, as I said, differently because you're no longer seeking God's hand. You're not seeking God's hand. You're seeking his heart on every matter. You're seeking, okay, how does God see this person? That's still, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you a saying that I say um, a lot of times when I hear people talking um, about certain people. I'll just put it this way. I'll say that's still, God, that's still God's child. That's still God's daughter. That's still God's son. And so when you... When your words are seasoned with grace and you're not in a place of survival mode, you see people differently. They're not your competition. You're not comparing yourself to them. You're, you look at them differently. You have the heart of God towards them. And so this is what I mean to focus on the bigger picture. 
And so you treat God as how God would, you treat people as how God would treat them. You see resources as limitless and bountiful because God is limitless and bountiful. You're no longer operating from the flesh, but you look into a realm that is unseen, as Paul said, and you call those things that be not as though they are, and you operate from that realm. You live in that realm, and in God you live, and in God you die. And so I want you to make a decision from today forward that you will no longer operate from the flesh or from a place of survival. And if you find yourself doing so, remind yourself that we serve a God of abundance and he's not bound by space or time. And as a child of God, neither are you because at any moment you can call on God, you can call on the God that we serve and he will deliver you. I'm gonna take you into scripture and prove that to you. And it does not matter how long people say it might take, God can do it in a moment. I'm telling you, you can call on God and he'll deliver you from that situation, he'll deliver you from that place God can do it within a moment. There are many people who say, you know, I just, there was a testimony that came through. I'm not sure if it was the one, I, one of the ones I read to you today, but there was somebody who emailed in, they were, in a, they were sleeping in their car, called on God. They were out of their car, did not take long, did not take long, long. Literally, I believe it was this, either the same week or a day later. I'm not really sure, but I'm telling you that that is how quickly it can happen for you. You know, some people may be in that situation and they start, as I said, making plans and they start thinking, okay, so I need to get this job, it's going to take this long. No, 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 God can do it within a moment. God can do it within a day. I'm going to even say that for many of you, I can, I can say there may be people that the Lord has already put your name on their mind. The Lord has already put you on their heart. That's how the favor of God works. That's the favor of God in operation. And that's, you're, you're destined to receive that and the grace of God as a child of God, especially as you continue to diligently seek him. And so I want to prove this to you. I want to take you to Psalms chapter 34, verse 19. This is where David says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all, not out of some of them. Not out of just these, but not those down there. No, all of them. All. I'm going to read that to you. I'm going to go um, go there because there's, I want to read to you um, Psalms 34 and not in its entirety, but most of it is very applicable. Okay. I'm going to read to you Psalms 34, 4 through 10. I'm going to jump down to 15 through 19. Listen to this. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The same will be for you. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. And that word radiant, it means literal, literal, literally radiant. And there, there'll be a literal glow to you. Doesn't matter where you are, what you're going through, because you're a child of God. He's kept you in a state of peace. I'm telling you, there's when you're in a state of peace because you know that God is your source, doesn't matter what you're experiencing or what you're up against, you're not worried. You're not anxious because you know God will God is gonna deliver you out of that situation. And so you have just a presence of radiance on you, especially as you're, you're spending time with the Lord, continuing continually. Um, the glory of God will be displayed on you, just like Moses coming down from Mount Zion. He was, lit he was literally glowing. Okay, verse six. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. There's the word all again, not some of his troubles, all his troubles. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Not blessed is the man who takes refuge in our government and the world system. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in the Lord. You made the Lord your source. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. Have no lack. 
The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And then I'm going to skip down to verse 15 through 19. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, that's you, that's me. The Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. There's the word all again, all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all, out of them all. And so I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what situation you're in in life. And even if you're someone who, as I went through that list of how to determine if you may be in survival mode and you're saying, that's me, that's me, I'm going through that, I've dealt with that, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I'm going to tell you that as it says, Psalm 34, 19, the Lord delivers him out of them all. All God will shift you into a place of abundance so quickly, so quickly. He'll meet your need so quickly within a moment, within an instant. And all it takes is you saying, you know what? I'm not going to rely on this person. I'm not, they're not my source. I'm not going to rely on this job. I'm not going to rely on the government. I'm turning to God, my source. And it took, you know, as you know, I read to you on one of those testimonies, surrendering to God and saying, listen, Lord, I'm done trying to figure it out in my own might or power. I look to you who is my source. And that's what he was waiting for you to do all along. And I'm telling you that when you go to him in that way, because you're now seeking God and the things of God, then all of those things will, will be met for you. All of those things will be met for you right on time. And for many of you, more than anything you would ever think of or imagine. And so I want to say a prayer for those of you who are here and you're listening to this. I'm glad the Lord sent you here because I believe that it really transformed um, a lot of you and the way that you see things. And many of you are going to begin to see the God, the Lord, and the world differently. And you're going to begin to, to, I want to put it this way, you're going to begin to shift into a place of abundance that you never thought was possible for you. So I thank you, Jesus, for sending your children to this message. I know, Lord, that you love them. You love them more than anything they even know, Lord God, anything they can even think of or imagine. You know, a lot of times we hear over and over again, God, that you love us, but we can't even really begin to comprehend at the level that you love us. And so I thank you for loving us with such a deep love, Lord. I know that there are many things that you have planned for your children, and that's why they're here and they're listening to this now. I ask that you will begin to show them, Lord, things that are going on in their life that is keeping them in a state of survival and put an end to it now. Help them, Lord, turn to you in those moments when the enemy is now trying to offer them an alternative to keep them in that low state of survival. Help them turn to you, God, as, as, your, as their source and their help so that they're not relying on people, they're not relying on government systems, they're not relying on their jobs, they're not relying on things within this world, but they are relying on you because you are their source. Help them turn to you, God. And I know as you say in your word that you deliver them out of them all. You will deliver your children out of them all, whatever it is they're going through. There are some people who think that their situation is too hard for you. They think that maybe you will give them this, but not this much. They think that maybe you, you will give them, you'll put them here, but not there. But no, God, you are a God of abundance. You are a God who is limitless. And so you'll even take it the extra mile and do more than anything they could ever think of or imagine. And so we thank you in advance, Lord, for people who are moving into new environments. I'm talking about new living situations where you said they should be. Why? Because simply because they are a child of God. We thank you, Lord, that you are giving people new job positions. Why? Simply because they are a child of God and they walk uprightly in you. You say that you reward 
those who diligently seek you. And so these things come simply as a reward in favor of God. We thank you, Lord, that people are receiving their healing because they're rising up and they're taking it, Lord. Why? Because they walk uprightly in you and simply because they are a child of God. We thank you, Lord, that no more are they going to accept the trash of the devil, but they now refuse it and they only accept what you have planned for them. I ask, Lord, that you help them to continue to occupy the space that you were raising them up to. As you say many times in your, in your word, come up here. It's more than anything that they have materially, but it's a state of being, a state of being and living it and walking in the high calling that you've called us to. I ask that you will teach them how to occupy that high calling. I thank you in advance, Lord God, for the calling you've placed on every single person that is underneath the sound of my voice and the, the fruit, the much fruit that will come forth from this message and the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you, you to comment below if this message blessed you. What part of it blessed you? If you want prayer, I want you to click the link below in the description and send over your prayer request because we want to come into agreement with you concerning the things of God for your life. And we only pray the will of God for you because I believe that by praying the will of God, you're going to receive anything far more than what you thought or imagined for yourself. Why? Because God knows what we need, not what we want. There are many times we can think that we need certain things, we want certain things, but God knows our beginning from our end. And so he says, no, you actually need that. You actually need this opportunity. You actually need that person. You actually need to stay in this place. And so we pray the will of God concerning you. And if you want that, you can send in a prayer request below that on that same page there's an option to send in your testimony and we love to celebrate with you and so definitely send those in i want to give everyone the opportunity to put seed in the ground and so i actually want to take you this is something that i was going to share with you all earlier but i didn't get to I want to take you back to Philippians chapter 419 because I want to put more context to what Paul was saying here. And so he says in 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so what many people don't do is they don't go up to verse 15. If you go up to verse 15, Paul is talking to the Philippians and he says, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me and giving and receiving except you only. And then he goes on to say, because they did, that it goes to their account. And by doing that, God will supply every need of theirs according to his riches and glory. And so I have to tell you the whole truth when it comes to Philippians 4.19. This scripture is 100% true and it, it is made manifest in the lives of those who sow into ministries and ministers and so that is just how it operates there are many people who are calling on the scripture and they're wanting to it to be an effect in their life but they're not doing what it is that is required to receive this level of blessing and so paul is saying because you because you've sown into the work that i'm doing that God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. And so for those of you who are sowing today, I'm just gonna tell you that this is what you can look forward to. This is what's coming for you, that there's no need of yours that you'll go to the Lord for standing on this scripture and he won't meet. And oh, I know this because I've applied this to my life. I say, Lord, listen, I pour into your kingdom. I put first the kingdom of God according to Matthew 6, 33, and I, I have sown into the kingdom agenda, your ministers and your ministries, Lord. And because of this, this your word tells me and Philippians 4, 19, every need of mine will be met according to your riches and glory. And every single time I go to the Lord with a need, I have a prayer list. If you've seen it, it is vast and they're all met. They're all met. And so the same will be for you. Also, there are many other resources below. There's mentorship, there is journey through the wilderness course there's a fasting email list that many of you have been joining i'm so proud of you all i know that the lord is going to move miraculous ways because you're deciding to push aside the plate and separate yourself from your flesh and seek god and the things of god 
he's going to move for you. There's going to be breakthrough. There's going to be chains of bondage coming off of you. There's going to be things released to you. Those of you who are deciding to fast, that link is in the description. And there are many other things there. I'll say this, whatever you get into that the Lord is leading you to through your obedience and your faithfulness, the Lord is going to move. And then I look forward to your testimony. So I want you to know that I love you all. I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message. Thank you.